Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not To Comic Book. This being your show, we're talking about TV shows that are editations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Doom Patrol. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, this, uh, the beginning of this episode kind of answered a question I was wondering about, because I was almost thinking, like, Niles hadn't visited Dorothy in that 90-plus years. If It makes sense, because if he hadn't, she'd probably be a lot more resentful than she is. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, it's a situation that basically it seems like he only obviously popped in every once in a while. So, I mean, granted, before getting her from Danny last season, who knows how long it's been since he last saw her. Regardless, um, the fact of the matter is now it's a situation of like, well, how do we fix Danny? They're trying to figure that all out, which immediately, you know, Rita's kind of like wait you're planning on sending her back because Rita and Larry kind of figured this out they're like you're trying to get Danny fixed up so you can put her back and he's like I haven't decided anything yet you know but Rita and them are kind of certain they're kind of like already like we kind of know that you are you've already kind of made up your mind whether you'll admit or not because you don't want to admit it you kind of potentially already made up your mind but obviously Dorothy opens the door lo and behold is it it's the Danny's ends they're here to, you know to help out Danny and um it's beautiful to see everybody like morally corrupt obviously flex is there so it's you know it's all about them you know kind of partying it up because it's like okay so you know danny lives off their their happy their joy you know their love so it's kind of like you know they're throwing a party and everything so i think that's pretty dope and it's just kind of like and it's like okay uh now it's like we'll get uh danny will be back to her um their self uh by the time um uh, bedtime rolls around and I love that being a segment throughout the episode boom four hours to bedtime um obviously Cliff is kind of you know still reeling with everything that went down last episode um there's obviously also the situation with Jane because she's not in control and it's just kind of like all right so who's up top it's like Hangman's daughter and it's like oh okay and you have um you have uh, Hammerhead being like what what's wrong with that it's like I don't know it's just I mean, is that really okay? Because it's just like, yeah, all they know how to do is paint. But it's like, you know, it's like kind of being like, oh, being on top eight. It's like, well, at least the hangman's daughter has one talent. That's one more than you, Jane. And she's like, okay. It's just It's because they're looking for anyone to get up there so they can bounce. But even the hangman's daughter didn't have all the answers because it's like, all I do is paint. It's like, he's like, but yeah, if you do leave, where are you going to go? Like, how are you going to make money? And she's like, I don't, I don't know. Like the one thing I do is paint. Like who else in there can help you with that? And it's like, is it the one with the flaming head? Because the big sun head? Because I don't think she's going to be able to get a fucking loan. And it's like, yeah, it's like, and Cliff's like, don't worry, you will figure it out. Then there's a the moment between Niles and um, Cliff where Cliff is like, all right, you got it. Like, I screwed everything up. You know, I fuck everything up. And it's just like, he's like, I just want to get out of my head for a little while. And the, and the chief is like, all right, basically, if you want me to, I could, like, dump ecstasy in the tank your heads. And he's like, wait, I'm telling you I'm going through, like, a mental crisis, and you're willing to give me ecstasy? And boom, we have a high robot. Because he's like, nothing to see here, just a robot doing the robot. You know, it's just like, holy shit, dude. Yes. Um... It's so interesting because it's like so many, obviously everyone's dealing with kind of their own familial issues and stuff like that because like Cliff is kind of, you know, he feels like he messed up as a father. Obviously that became even more apparent to him last episode. Larry's been literally going through the same thing as well, you know, just because he's trying to party it up a little too. And uh, he's dancing with uh, Rita for a little bit, but then she goes over to Flex. And I was like, oh, is she in Flex? Is that become, about to become a thing? And it's like, no, that goes its own direction, but we'll circle back. And the guy's dancing with uh, dancing with Larry and Larry's like, all right, I like because I think he hasn't really danced with anyone in a long time, aside from, from everyone, you know, in uh, Doom Manor. But uh, he's dancing, and the guy's like, oh, I bet you're like super muscular under those bandages. He's like, yeah, cause if I take them off, everyone's going to die, you know, like melt and die. And, uh, and the guy just backs away, and I'm like, oh, come on, Larry. That, that shouldn't be your opening line. That is like, ugh. Yeah, you know. So, obviously, there was this moment between him and Cliff later on I thought was kind of interesting where it's kind of like, oh, this, um... It's like, you know, it's like, oh, Larry, you should, you know, shouldn't just be in here. You should be partying it up. But for Larry, he's like, oh, the chief has got drugs. You want some drugs? And Larry's like, I'll probably just fuck that up, too. He's just like, because I've done it, everything in my life. He's like, I get it. You know, things didn't work out. When you saw your kid, things kind of didn't work out. He's like, I've literally been in the same situation. It's like, kids, they fuck things up. It's like, no, 
we fuck things up. Because for him, it's like, I was supposed to go to space. I was supposed to be a father. And just none of that ended up happening. And it's just like, because now one of his sons is dead. He will never get to spend time with one of his kids. And now his other kid is old too. So it's like so much of their lives gone. Like I missed out on their lives. Like how could I step back into their lives? And obviously the same thing applies to Cliff. Hell, and once again, like I, I just made comparisons between Cliff and Chief, but obviously all three of them are in that same uh, boat where it's like, we have all been um, not the most there for our children fathers you know because like you know same thing for Niles Niles has been in and out of Dorothy's life the in, her, her, in, most of her no like her entire life they spent the time what that two years together before he left her with Danny like that's that created problems all on its own um but I just love as the time gets closer and closer like well for when Dorothy sings uh the song did that song exist before Charlie in the Chocolate Factory? It most likely did, but that's I always associate that song with Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Um, but she's singing that, and then it kind of you know boosts morale, and Danny's kind of talking again. Um, I did like morally corrupt her um, conversation with Vic because obviously for Vic it isn't just a hundred percent about you know Ronnie's past. It's like well yeah she has a past, but for him it's just like she's kind of a shock to my system. It's just like. He, he can't stop thinking about her. And I like what Morally Corrupt says. She's like, everyone here has a past. But the fact of the matter is going out, you know, without Danny for this past like month or whatever made her realize like that the, how little the world kind of has changed in certain regards. It's like they get called certain things behind their backs to their face. She's like some dude called her all kinds of things associated with being a freak. But it's like. It's just that person was mad because we are the same. We breathe the same air. We walk on the same planet, you know? So it's just kind of like, basically, if you're thinking about this girl, like, go with love, you know? Because life is too short to kind of be going at it the way you're going at it, Vic. And I thought that was kind of like a beautiful, you know, sentiment and everything. Um, at the same time, there's a the whole situation with Rita and Flex. I love that where it's just kind of like a, oh, Rita wants him to do the orgasm flex again. I'm like, wait, what? And she, he's like, well, we should warn everybody. She's like, no, you can probably bring it down. At first, when she was saying that, I was like, wait, do you not want him to do the flex? Do you want him to? Because I'm sure it's, you know, I mean, I'd assume because it's been a long time for literally everyone in Doom Manor. Uh, it's been a long time for Cliff. It's definitely been a long time for Larry. So I went, you know, so I was like, oh, is Rita? But it's like, no, just just flex because for her, she's like, I need to clear my mind. Because I love when she was trying to do the whole, uh, she's like, no worry, I got my power. So she's going to try and stretch up and um, put the disco ball up, but it doesn't work. And he's like, D did it work? And Rita's like, yeah, it worked perfectly. So I'm going to go and get a ladder. Um, I was like, oh, that, that's embarrassing. You want to show off, oh, I'm about to go superhero-ish. Nope, that that didn't work okay um so he's got she also makes him face the other way she's like nose to the dot and everything and he's down the flex but also it doesn't just like blank it blanks her mind to a certain extent but also it awakens like a memory kind of like a uh, mental block that she had and it's sad because it turns out that mental block was like basically see i think it's kind of where i think it kind of created a lot of mentalities that Rita has. Like, for example, it's like she, like her mom, like sleeping with a producer to get her a job, like, and her mom saying like, cause she's like, oh, you want me to sing or dance? And she's like, honey, you should focus on your other talent. And it's like, part of me is wondering like what that meant. I kind of interpret that as you need to uh, make sure you're beautiful, but that's almost sad because you, like, almost like, I'm sure there's a deep, because I don't want it to mean what I think it means because it's almost like you're telling your daughter like you need to be good at other stuff so that when you're older and the time is appropriate. The sad thing is who knows if the word time appropriate is even allocated in between in between those words, you know, but it's just like and having to see your mom like that because it's just that's. Obviously, that's a lot for a kid to see, and I think, obviously, that's been, like, something... I think that's been some mentality that's been in the back of Rita's mind the entire time. Something that also crossed my mind this episode, too, was... I wonder, is Rita getting so close to, um... Dorothy? Because it's kind of like... Wasn't it Mary Beth, the, the actress that ended up, you know, killing herself in the whole, her baby situation? Like, 
was is that what that's supposed to be? Could Rita kind of be trying to make up for the past by getting close to Dorothy? I, I, I'm part of me wonders about that. Like maybe that's why she's so defensive about Dorothy when it comes to. I mean, for one, it's the chief's daughter because it's also like she's been because it's like oh how old are you eleven? How old, how long have you been alive? It's like a hundred and three quarters. So it's like it's a situation of like I'm curious. Is it almost like? You're trying to make up for the past of like, I wasn't there for a child when they needed me. Um, because remember, she got that role. So she kind of was like, eh, didn't, sadly, almost didn't care anymore. Which I think that could be, once again, an underlining issue kind of created from her mom. Her mom kind of created the quote unquote monster she was. And not just being a last woman. It's just the person she became before the, you know, she became what she became before she got her meta powers and everything, you know? So I just thought that was kind of an interesting underlining thing. Obviously, all the different um, Janes are trying to leave, but they can't because it's like, fine, like the new ones pops up like Scarlet Harlot, but then like she's enjoying the party. So she stays. Then later on, Dr. Harrison comes out because uh, uh, because apparently uh, the sex men show up at the moment. I was like, because at first when they're in the van, I'm like, is this supposed to be like the... Um, is this a Bureau of Normalcy? It's like, is this what this... I mean, a lot of them are dead. So I was like, is this... But it's like, no, they have a different uniform. Maybe they're... And it's like, oh, they're the sex men. There's Lieutenant Kiss and Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Torture. I was like, okay, just what you... The thing you love about Doom Patrol, it's weird. And yes, they kicked up the weird for this episode. I'm like, what? What 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 are we talking about? Cause we saw like well like Rita was orgasming and everything. There was some dude that had like a uh, almost like a thing come out of his head and being like ooh he points it at Doom Manor then he disappears and then later on you see Cliff dancing with the shadow and everything. I was like what the hell is this all about? Well it turns out all this sexual energy being built up is being devoured by this sex demon named the shadow shadowy Mister Evans, and so. That they're here to kind of figure it. It's like we're here to save you uh, because basically the sexual situation could be the end of the world. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So apparently, this sexual demon is feeding off of so much sexual energy that basically is going to give birth to a baby, and that baby's going to cry, basically wipe out all the kids, and it's also going to basically bring about a, basically a sex apocalypse. Essentially, I was like, this is the craziest shit ever. And um and Cliff is like, holy crap! I I know that shadow dude. I did holy shit. He's like, I danced with the sex demon. And then Morley Crow was there patting his arm, almost like, uh, good for you, honey. Good for you. Um. I also love that, like, uh, who was it? Uh, morally corrupt and Vic couldn't get too close. I guess because of their constitutions, them being kind of more human than everyone else there, that they won't could be controlled or whatever, or at least. It's interesting because they sent them away, but let... I mean, Cliff makes sense because even Larry was like, you have to be the one to do this because it's like, right, remember, you had to be the one to fake an orgasm last episode. So obviously, orgasms don't work on you, but obviously, they work on Larry. So I was like, I was wondering how that whole situation was going to play out. Also, the sex ghost. It's like, don't look at the sex ghost. And Cliff is like, I know this is kind of messed up, but um, these sex ghosts are pretty hot. And Larry's like, shut up, Cliff. Um... And, you know, uh, Dr. Harrison went out there to talk to Cuddles. If it's not, uh, if it's not, if it wasn't going to be Cuddles, it was going to be hand stuff. I was like, I think Cuddles is the better Nick, uh, alias, you know, uh, but nevertheless, and her being like, oh yeah, like it came about because, uh, it was because of a stuff. Uh, animal or whatever which was his first sexual experience because he used it for masturbation before he knew what masturbation is like that's you know doc, dr harrison obviously going super super therapist mode and i was like oh come on don't embarrass the guy like that but then it turns out obviously this cry is gonna wipe out all the kids and then hammerhead comes out like wait what would you say what happened to the kids they'll go poof and i was like immediately my brain was like oh baby doll but then like she's like fuck and then i was like right not baby doll K, which I don't think, because I think baby doll technically counts as an adult, so I don't think it would affect her. Maybe not, but it definitely would affect K. So that's why Hammerhead got involved, because Cliff is like, I'm not about to go in there and kill a child. Like even if this is the situation, he's like, you're asking me to go in there and kill a child. Also, you're embarrassing me in front of the sex man by being admitting I can't have an orgasm. But uh, Hammerhead, orgasming it up, goes in there. It's like we can't let the baby cry. So she stops the baby by shoving it right up. Uh, shadowy mr evans and that brings an end to the apocalypse and it's just like holy crap and then immediately afterwards you see a sex ghost just like 
pounding it, pounding it away, and then like you know, kiss and torture. Like we got this. I'm like, this is like, this is the most messed up version of Poltergeist ever. The weirdest, weirdest version. That's nuts. And I even love later on Cliff is like, is literally no one gonna talk about the fact that the matter is Rita's G spot almost caused the end of the world, and just like no one said anything. I'm like, we're not talking about this. That's crazy. I love it. Um, and obviously Cliff was like, oh my god, Hammerhead, you were a hero, you saved the day. It's like, I did it for Kay. It's like, but come on, it felt good, didn't it? Come here, you're going for, in for a hug. And she's like, uh, no, and he hugs her. And, and then Jane shifts back in. She's like, fine, Jane, you win. So it's kind of like, it's not as easy being up on top. Because it's even interesting because the way Jane was kind of talking about it makes it seem like probably the, the, the personalities that showed up during the intervention or at least probably some of the personalities that had issues with things being the way they are now. But it doesn't seem like every personality feels that way. I mean, conform, I mean, obviously we didn't see uh, we didn't see Penny. We didn't see a number of uh, so it's either they don't uh, either they don't agree with the other personalities or um, they just weren't there. But it, it begs the question of like that must mean not not every some people side with Jane where they want to stay here. So I thought that was kind of a pretty um, interesting you know aspect to all of this. Um, at the same time, there is a whole situation with Dorothy, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like, obviously, like, every time, like, you know, it got closer to her bedtime. And I, I like I said, I like they using that as a title card and stuff like that. But um, Dorothy's trying to go to bed. And um, the one that's talking to her is a candle maker. And I thought it was interesting because she pointed out, she's like, you never used to talk this much. It's like, why now? But I guess in the grand scheme of things, it kind of makes sense. Because it's like, you don't want to just be, you're a grown up. You're not just a kid. So she wants to go out there, kind of party it up a little bit. But um, then, you know, the candle maker was pointing out, like, if you uh, let Danny get fixed, you'll get locked up again. And she's like, what? Like, Danny is your prison. And it's like, no, Danny's not. Danny's my friend. But it made her realize, like, yeah, like, dad kept using Danny to kind of lock me away. And then she had to ask Danny. It's like, Danny, were you my friend or were you my prison? And then Danny's like, I wish I could say I was only your friend, you know? And so... Now, like, Candlemaker, Candlemaker was telling her to destroy Danny because if Danny gets fixed, you'll be locked up again. And obviously, Vic was there seeing, you know, Dorothy. And, you know, and Dorothy's like, I don't know what to do, Danny. I, I can't go back. And Danny's like, neither can I, you know. So I'm sure there's layers to that being like, I can't go back and make up for the mistake that kind of your dad and me made by just, like, having you locked up. Because it's not like she was on the street. She always stayed down below. Like, she never got to experience Danny, like, you know, ha having the party and fun like everyone else did. You know, she was always kind of locked away and alone. All she had were her friends, you know. But even that, like, no matter what, you're still stuck with yourself all that time. And just for the few times here and there when your dad pops up, that's the only new face you get to see every so often, you know. So that's kind of sad, sad especially for a child who... You know, despite her being kind of 100 and some years old, she still is a little girl. Like, she's never, I mean, to be fair, like, she doesn't want to grow up, but at the same time, I guess she was never really given a chance to grow up. She never was able to kind of live a life, which you can make, the, you, it's it's a complicated thing. Because later on, like, you know, Niles is like, all right, I'm glad to have you basically, Danny, as a backup, which Danny's like, I'm not going back to being a street and I'm not going to lock her up again. And it's like, he's like, you no, he's like, I'm doing what I could as a father. But it's like, Danny's like, I need to do better. So should you, Niles. Like, the fact of the matter is, I, the way we handled this was not the best way. So as a father, you need to find a different way to figure this out because he needed, Danny was kind of his insurance policy until he figured out, like, how to fix his current situation, how to do this whole thing with his because like I said no matter what he says at the beginning Danny was always going to be that option because he needed to make sure that he could live at least a day longer than his daughter not unless he finds a way to kind of get rid of her powers or something like that not unless that ends up being a thing which obviously you know the flash shows that you know metahuman abilities can be taken away but her situation is potentially different you know so it might not be that simple but we'll see Obviously, Vic is staying for a while, you know, but, at, you know, it's like, and even Larry being like, why did you go to Detroit? Because he's like, I needed somewhere to, you know, I could heal. And he's, Larry's like, you couldn't heal here? And he's like, can you? And so that becomes a thing, like, do men or, you know, now set it up to be a place that they could heal, but, like, can any of them truly heal? And there's even that thing at the end where Rita, you know, um, Dorothy being like, you know, were you 
serious when you said that I was beautiful and she's like mm, you have other talents and you're like oh it's kind of sad like she's a little out of it but it's like for her to be using her own mother's words like that and I was like oh that's gonna be sad to see what you know and obviously Dorothy tries talking to Candlemaker but Candlemaker doesn't want to talk to her um just because it's like you messed up like this could have been our chance to escape but you you're choosing to stay the child rather than growing up so i'm like i said i'm wondering is there something else to the candle candle maker situation where it's like you have other plans for dorothy like obviously you want dorothy to kind of give in to like you know make wishes and stuff like that but a part of me is like because even she said it herself like you're talking more than you used to so it's a thing of like i think it's just it finds this as an it sees this situation as an opportunity either because it was worried about being locked up in Danny again but now that's no longer an issue because Danny like I said Danny's not going back as a street um Danny is a tire which I'm wondering is that supposed to represent like Danny will eventually turn into like an RV a large RV or something um but obviously they've got a you know the Danny's ends are obviously being able to go on the adventure with Danny you know so kind of go on this new love adventure so that was just kind of a beautiful and i love clipping like so they're not so they're not going to stick around to help clean up huh so a lot of interesting things went down in this episode I, i'm curious to ultimately see where all of this ends up leading us going forward into the next episode but really that's all i want to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe look like to the force and enjoy it good day and goodbye